Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Here's the clear coolant reservoir that I found in the junkyard. Actually, it doesn't look maybe a, a year too old uh, compared to my yellow one that I can't hardly see through. The big thing with uh, replacing these 850 coolant reservoir tanks is you want to make sure that you can hear the float going up or down because that is what triggers your low coolant light in your system. To change your coolant reservoir on the Volvo 850 all you need is the 13 millimeter deep socket with the quarter inch screwdriver handle to drain the radiator I had the 7 millimeter socket and the quarter inch drive ratchet to take the uh, uh, lines off of the bottle and then a flat tips screwdriver. And uh, you want something to catch your coolant in and I would reuse the coolant unless you're planning to do a flush. Now to replace this coolant reservoir, the first thing you want to do is drain some coolant out of the system. I would drain about a gallon out of the radiator before I remove the bottle. First thing I'm going to do in the drain process is slowly open the expansion tank lid. These expansion tanks, some of them were under pressure, my system is, and it's equivalent to opening the radiator. If that temperature was above 150, I would not do this, but since it's down under 150, I would. Since I have my reservoir cap open, I'm going to come down here and under the Volvo on the driver's side in the splash pan, you can see that hole. Inside that hole, there's a nipple on the radiator that I think it takes a 13 millimeter. You turn that loose, you don't have to take it all the way out and coolant should start to drain out of that. This piece of plastic uh, plug shouldn't be in there hard, so I take this small screwdriver adapter along with a uh, uh, deep well socket number 13 and I twist it until the coolant starts coming out draining it into a drain pan. Once you got the coolant drained out of the bottle you take a screwdriver and put it down this side of the tank and pry just a little bit and lift the bottle out from the frame of the car. Once you have the bottle lift out of the frame of the car you push this tab and unplug the sensor wire. After the sensor wire is unplugged, you want to unscrew that, which should be a seven millimeter, and take off this top clamp, whatever size that is, and swap these clamps and hoses over to the replacement bottle. Now, if you have a new bottle, there's a good chance that it won't have the low level sensor. So you'll have to get some pliers or something and pop that sensor out and pop the new one on. It just pulls out of that, it snaps in pretty tight, and then this wire slides off of there like that. I'm not sure about the aftermarket bottles, but the good thing about the Volvo bottles is they have a metal sleeve in that neck and a metal sleeve in the neck of this connection down there. Uh, one of the fallacies of connecting these hoses is having a clamp small enough to actually seal that off. This is a pressurized system, and oftentimes this hose uh, connection there is not tight enough and air and coolant seeps out of there sometimes. So you got to make sure you got a clamp small enough to tighten that up. I don't know if you noticed, but whoever put this bottle on the last car actually had this plug pointing the other direction. So I'm going to take it and turn it around like I did and now I'm going to plug it in and snap the bottle in place. Okay, I got all my hose clamps connected, and then I came down here and tightened up the drain plug in the bottom of the radiator. Now, the radiator housing is plastic, and that drain plug is plastic, so just snug that down. You do not want to try to tighten that tight, or you'll strip it and destroy uh, a drain plug and possibly a radiator. Just snug that down. Don't tighten it. And make sure if you took the plug loose on the back of your block that that's tightened down as well. On this Volvo it's a 13 millimeter the same as the drain plug on the radiator. 
Okay, since this car has the level sensor inside the reservoir and I replaced it, I'm going to go ahead and turn the car on and start it for a couple of seconds before I fill up the coolant because I want to make sure that I get a low coolant light on this new reservoir. I've poured the coolant in the bottle. The bottle's a little bit more than the max mark, but I know there's air in the system that I need to burp out. Uh, I don't use a funnel, I'm not a spiller, I pour so much, but you may need a funnel to do this. So I just got a little bit left in the bottle, so I'm going to start the car and try to get the rest of the uh, bottle into the overflow tank. Okay, I couldn't get any more coolant in here, so I put the cap on. So I'm going to drive it around a little bit. Whenever I need to go somewhere, the system will burp. In a day or two, providing that I don't get a low coolant light, I'll check the reservoir and any topping off I'll do, I'll go ahead and do it with the coolant first. But like I said, I should have uh, some air in the system that will burp sooner or later, normally within the next uh, 20 to 50 miles. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.